Hey there, my name is Liz and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post home decor videos every Sunday and Wednesday from affordable decor and DIYs to shop with me videos. So if that's the kind of content you like to see, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss out on future videos. So for today's video, I thought it would be fun to do a little dining room tour slash reveal. I think it's one of my favorite rooms in the house, like decor wise. So I'm kind of excited to show it off a little bit. That being said, it's definitely not perfect. Um, one, we rent, so there are some things that we just cannot change. Um, and then two, I just kind of haven't done a lot of work to it recently. Um, so there are still some things that I ideally would kind of like to add or change up um, just to make the room look really finished and perfect that I haven't gotten to yet. But I feel like that's just kind of the reality with decorating. Um, you're never like truly finished, right? So I still just kind of wanted to show you guys around in here. Um, and I do actually have a couple little small projects, a little updates that I wanted to tackle and I thought I would bring you guys along for, so let's get started. So the first project we're doing in here today is just hanging up these three posters and I actually found these at REI of all places a couple years ago and my husband and I both love them. I think the kind of vintage look is so cool on these and we live in DC so these are all pretty local attractions for us. So I wanted to get them hung up on this big empty wall here. On the opposite wall is the removable picture frame molding that I put up and this wall just looks very empty. So I thought that these would look great here and also fill up the big space. The wall was somehow pretty dirty. There were just some scuff marks and dirt or dust over it. So I started by wiping it all down with a magic eraser, which I love to use for scuff marks on walls and to wipe down my baseboards. And as I mentioned in the beginning, my dining room definitely is not perfect. You can see this huge hole in the wall that was here since we moved in and it dried drives me crazy, but hopefully these posters will help distract from it. So I realized that the wall was actually way dirtier than I originally thought because it ended up feeling like I was just moving the dirt around after a bit and not really getting anything off the wall. So it took a few rounds with the magic eraser and in the end, I'm not certain I got everything perfectly clean, but in theory, it's better than when I started. So once I gave up on getting the wall perfectly clean, I had to fix this poster which fell out of place a little bit, so I flipped it over and started bending the little brackets up. To save my fingers and nails, I like to use a butter knife to get under the bracket and bend it up. This little trick is a total lifesaver for me. And these are actually the frames that I got off of Amazon. I've had them for a few years now, and although I haven't moved them around a ton, they have held up really well so far. I'll have these linked in the description box below in case you want to check them out, and I'll also include a link to anything else you see in this video that I can. So I fixed the placement of this poster within the frame, added some additional tape to help it stay in place, and put the backing back on. So to help figure out where exactly I wanted to hang these on the wall, I pushed the chairs back and tried to balance the frames on the tops. I figured I could at least get a slight idea of how far apart to hang them this way, and surprisingly, I really liked how they looked in this first spot that I tried, so then it was time to prep the frames. Unsurprisingly, Banks was very curious about what I was doing. He was also, I think, secretly hoping that I would go feed him because it was super close to his lunchtime. So I think we installed these hooks to hang these up above our couch where we used to have them, so I grabbed the first screwdriver I could find, which happened to be this super mini one that ended up not working so eventually I went to search for a more normal size screwdriver and once I had that it was smooth sailing. I got these command velcro hanging strips to hang these posters up. I usually don't mind putting a nail in the wall to hang things but this wall is kind of weird. I swear it's like partially already degraded and it's not very sturdy so I didn't want to add any holes in it which is why I went with these removable command strips. The package recommended using four strips for a frame of this size and this is the first time I've used these strips but they were so easy. You just peel off the backing, stick it on the frame and then you take another strip, press the velcro sides together and once you're ready to hang it on the wall, you just peel off the outer facing adhesive strip and just press it onto the wall. And here's a little close up of the process. So I wanted to start with the center poster, which was this title basin one. So I peeled off the adhesives from the command strips and then went to go stick it on the wall. My toxic trait is that when I hang things, I just eyeball it. So I liked where this was on the wall based on the chair placement and I tried to figure out what would be a good height and then I just stuck it on there. I really pressed it on the wall hoping that it wouldn't fall off and then I just went to the other side of the room to stare at it and see how it looked. To my surprise, I was really happy with how it looked so I moved on to the next 
next one. Again, I eyeballed the location and how far away from the center frame it should be and just really hoped that it was all straight. And I went back to really press the frames onto the wall and then I measured how far away the two were away from each other so I could at least try to make the third frame an equal distance from the center. And in case you're curious, these are about seven and a half inches apart from each other. So I went ahead and put the third frame up about where I thought it would go and I just stuck it up really lightly so that I could take it off easily if need be. Thankfully I did that because it needed to go about an inch farther out and it easily came off and stuck back on in the correct spot. I measured all of them one last time to make sure that they were all good and then pressed on each of the frames again because I was so nervous that these were just going to fall down in the middle of the night and it was going to be a complete disaster. And here's how they turned out. I'm so happy with the way that they look and honestly, very impressed with my hanging job. So after taking a step back and seeing how they look in the whole room, it definitely makes the room look so much more put together and I'm so glad we finally have something on this wall that also won't cause any damage. Okay, so the other project that I was going to get done today that I think is actually gonna have to wait was I was going to replant my fiddle leaf into this white pot that I got from Home Goods. This is just like in a, you know, old fashioned terracotta pot um, that just kind of like was left with the house. Um, and I think we wanna move that one outside and then replant the fiddle leaf in this beautiful white planter from home goods the only problem is that there are drainage holes in the bottom of this white one and i don't have anything to put underneath of it and i don't want it to damage our floors so that one's probably gonna have to wait for another day but the good news is that we can now get started with the fun stuff and kick off our little dining room tour So big reveal, here she is. I love this dining room and I love that you can see it like as soon as you walk in the house. But let's get down to the details. So I will start off with this lovely cabinet that's actually just from Ikea. We originally got it for our spare room upstairs, but we were in desperate need of some additional storage down here after all of our wedding gifts came in. So this is where it landed and I'm so happy about it. I love that it's a functional decor piece, meaning it looks so beautiful, but it's also amazing for storage. I put our fancy wine glasses and serving dishes in here and I think keeping just the glass and white dishes in here keeps it from looking too busy and cluttered and just keeps it look very minimalist and clean and not distracting. It's also great for when we have a lot of people over and we can just tell them to grab a glass and help themselves from the bar cart that's right across from it. And on top of the cabinet, I have a big vintage map that my parents gave me, a Molokini crater poster and ukulele that my husband and I brought home from our honeymoon in Hawaii and this gorgeous planter bowl. Sitting right next to the cabinet is just some random extra storage for more ugly items like cords. This is a trunk that my husband actually made and a cute little basket that we got from our friend who lived here before us. Now moving on to one of my absolute favorite pieces ever, our dining room table. I'm so lucky because my husband actually built this table from scratch. I still find it so impressive and because he built it we were able to have a much nicer table than we could have afforded to buy retail and it's totally custom to exactly what we wanted. I paired the table with these beautiful white chairs I got from Wayfair. I love Love the way the white contrasts with the table and I think it's a really classic and timeless look. So you probably notice that we don't have a rug in here and that's partially because I get so nervous thinking about trying to keep it clean. This is a pretty high traffic area because our back door is over here and my husband honestly is one of the messiest eaters I've ever known so I do worry about being able to keep a rug clean in here. And I really don't mind how it looks in here without a rug, but I'm still kind of undecided on whether or not I should get one. What do you guys think? So I prefer to keep tabletop decor in here really minimal because I just love the table so much and really would like to accent it rather than distract from it. I currently have this huge wooden board out, some battery operated candles and a vase with some green branches in here. The branches are actually just snipped from our neighbor's tree which overhangs into our back patio. If I don't have flowers but still want something on the table, I just cut a few overhanging branches and put them in a vase. I honestly love the foraged look and think again it's just a very minimal look but it's still so beautiful. I I actually read somewhere once that Shay McGee keeps a pair of scissors in her car because you just never know when you'll stumble across some foliage you just can't pass up. 
And these battery operated candles I think are from Costco, but I'll link a similar set from Amazon in the description box. It's just so nice to not have to worry about a real flame sometimes, and they add a really nice ambiance whenever they're on. One of the only real splurgy pieces I've ever bought is this gorgeous chandelier. It's from Pottery Barn and it was definitely a huge purchase for me, but I am obsessed with it. It's such a statement piece and really draws the eye to this room as soon as you walk into our house. I love that this style can really work in any room so we can always move it around if we want to. For example, I think it would look really beautiful in a bedroom. So in this other little corner, we have our little bar cart, a basket, and some plants. This basket is just for some random storage. As you can see right now, we have some bulbs that need to be planted outside. I love this little bar cart so much. We had absolutely no space for it in our last house, but I refused to get rid of it because I was so proud of the find, and I think it's just so cute. I knew we'd end up using it again. And as you can see, the bottom is a bit of a mess, but I try to keep the top pretty tidy, the keyword there being a try. And I love this little print with an old-fashioned recipe paired with this beautiful detailed white frame. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along and tackling that project with me and also enjoyed the tour of my dining room like i mentioned this is probably one of my favorite rooms in the house that being said it's far from perfect which you saw um but i hope you guys enjoyed watching this if you did please give it a big thumbs up down below to like the video and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos i hope to see you next time